every week when we gather as Grace Bible Church, we love to participate in what we call the Lord's Table or Communion. Our participation in the Lord's Table is our declaration that we agree with what God has said about Jesus and about his death. And really, it, it doesn't cost us much to gather and, and to practice this. We come to a comfortable building, a safe place, uh, really without fear of persecution, to engage in this practice week after week after week. And we should praise God for that. That is a privilege that we do not deserve. But historically, remembering and proclaiming Jesus' death in this way was a very costly practice. It was particularly costly during the reign of Mary Tudor from 1553 to 1558. During that time, she burned no less than 288 English Protestants. And though there were a variety of Christian beliefs, for which these martyrs were killed, at the center of almost all of them was this very practice of communion, taking the Lord's Supper. This is, of course, where Mary Tudor got the name Bloody Mary. And these men and women and even a few children who were burned they held what what Christians believe about the gospel and that cost them their lives when it came to how they took the Lord's Supper or what they thought about communion. Uh, This was so controversial because Protestants and Catholics hold vastly different beliefs about this practice. Really, the difference comes down to the purpose of communion or what Catholics will call the Eucharist, the Mass. The official teaching of Catholicism then and now is that the purpose of the Eucharist is to make atonement for the one taking it. This is why in Catholicism, a priest, not a pastor, operates and oversees this practice. Uh, He is said to be bringing Christ down on an altar which is why they have altars, and re-sacrificing, literally re-sacrificing the actual body, the actual blood of Jesus in the elements as those things they say are transformed. And this is why so many saints who believe the gospel had to die for this practice. They rejected this. Turn to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, we'll look together at verses 24 through 26. When we participate in communion, we are merely remembering and proclaiming Jesus' sufficient once for all time death in the place of sinners. We are remembering and proclaiming his sacrifice on behalf of those who believe. Hebrews 9, starting at verse 24, says this, For Christ, for Christ did not enter a holy place made with hands, a mere copy of the true one, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor was it that he would Offer himself often as the high priest enters the holy place year by year with blood that is not his own. Otherwise, if he was doing that, he would have needed to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now once, once at the consummation of the ages, he has been manifested to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Amen. 
this passage shows us why Christ's death, why his sacrifice was so much better, why it was superior than every other sacrifice for sins that came before him. It says that he made his sacrifice not in a place made with human hands, but in heaven in the very presence of God himself in verse 24. In the, he appeared in the presence of God for us. And Christ's sacrifice was superior because Jesus only offered himself once. Not every time we take communion. Not repeatedly. This is not a re-sacrificing of Christ. Otherwise, what he did on the cross was insufficient. And when we sin again, we need another sacrifice. We need Christ to re-sacrifice himself. That, saints, is not the case. Praise God. If Christ needed to offer himself more than once, then his death is no better than the animals that were sacrificed before him for people. Those sacrifices needed to happen repeatedly because they could never remove the stain of sin from the sinner. The blood of animals could never completely satisfy God's wrath or purify the consciences of those worshipers before God. Absolutely insufficient. That is why Christ had to offer himself to remove sins before God. And so it is a denial of the gospel to believe that Jesus needs to be re-sacrificed ever for sins. Consider for a moment what has to be true of God, what must be true of Jesus, if atonement was made in one event 2,000 years ago when Jesus offered himself on the cross. What must be true about God? That God is gracious It glorifies God's grace that Jesus only offered himself at one point in the middle of human history for past, present, and future sins. That he would atone for every sin committed, past, present, and future, even those after Jesus died, so that we no longer need to wonder if God is still gracious to us. (laughs) That Jesus was sacrificed only once highlights that grace of God. It also glorifies God's omniscience, his knowledge. God must remember all past sins and know beforehand all future sins to then put those sins on Jesus on the cross and punish him for them. God's knowledge is exalted in the gospel. And Jesus once for all sacrifice, also his power is exalted to bear the sins of the entire world, all of those whom Jesus would save, Jews and Gentiles who believe, and then endure the awesome weight of God's wrath against those sins, took nothing short of omnipotence. He had to be absolutely almighty. It also highlights God's faithfulness, that God kept his promises in that moment, that he had made ages beforehand all to to sacrifice a substitute in the place of sinners being fulfilled in that moment. His promise did not fail in that instance. And even God's eternality, that he has existed outside of time forever, no beginning, never to have an end, it would have taken the sinner and will, sinners who don't believe Jesus will experience eternity under God's unending wrath one day. Those who believe God in the Old Testament, those who believe God on this side of the cross, our side of the cross, eternal wrath was poured out on the Son. He had to be eternal to endure God's eternal wrath in a matter of hours on earth. 
This is our God, all implied by a once-for-all sacrifice. And so as you take communion, Christian, rejoice in who Jesus is, who he demonstrated himself to be at that moment almost 2,000 years ago in human history when he demonstrated tremendous kindness to you to save you before you were even born, ever thought of, and then in time worked in such a way that you would believe and receive the benefits of Christ's death. How kind of God toward us. And if you do not believe in Jesus, if you are still counting on something that you could do, something you could bring to the table, some practice that happens every week on a Sunday to then make you right before God, then we will call you to repent. That's sinful thinking. It is to make Christ's sacrifice insufficient. And if you have any questions, come talk to me. (laughs) Come talk to someone you've seen up front. An elder will be at the info table on your way out. We would love to talk more about this gospel and this hope that we have for eternal life. Whether you're a member or not of Grace Bible Church, if you believe the gospel, then we would welcome you to take communion with us as the men You can come forward and take communion on your own when your heart's prepared.